Did you know that the USA, despite its technological prowess, is facing an unexpected challenge from China in the realm of chip manufacturing? Well, join us till we look into China's rush into legacy chips and the West's uncertainty. In a twist of fate, China's strategic push into legacy chips has left the West at a crossroads, uncertain about how to respond. In this video, we'll unravel the intricacies of this evolving scenario, exploring the implications and strategies at play. With that said, let's dive right in. Now, recalling how often the United States has imposed sanctions on China's semiconductor industry, it becomes clear that there have been many occasions where they've actively worked to constrain it. These sanctions range from stopping local companies from providing chips to China to urging countries like Japan and the Netherlands not to give chip equipment to China. Forbes has documented these efforts by a U.S., which began in 2018 and continues till now. Every year, they introduce newer and more focused sanctions to limit China's chip production. It's quite intriguing that despite the intended impact of these sanctions, the Chinese chip industry not only managed to endure, but also continued to advance. Recent news stories highlight a shared sense of unease in both the U.S. and Europe regarding China's rapidly expanding traditional chip production. Interestingly, both regions are contemplating the idea of imposing further sanctions on China. This signifies that while the effectiveness of previous sanctions might raise some doubts, there's a genuine apprehension about the potential consequences should China's grip on the chip market continue to strengthen. The worry comes from the fact that both the US and Europe depend a lot on chips from China. This makes it tough for sanctions to have a complete effect. It's a tricky situation. Even with new sanctions on the way, there's still a need for these chips and China has found a chance here. They're focusing on making these chips that might be older, but they're still really necessary. This makes China's move quite smart. These older chips are quite important and not easy to find, and this gives more power to China's plan. By the year 2026, it's predicted that China will have more factories for making computer chips than the US. Semiconductor manufacturing plants, often referred to as FABs, play a vital role in the production of chips. China's strategic emphasis on manufacturing older generation chips holds significance due to their widespread use in products such as smartphones, electric vehicles, and even military hardware. Remarkably, these seemingly outdated chips underpin the creation of contemporary devices and cutting-edge technologies. This unforeseen development has presented American chip manufacturers with a substantial challenge. The surge in chip production can be attributed to China's resolute commitment to maintaining these vital older chips, which serves as a direct response to the imposition of sanctions. When faced with these sanctions, China took significant measures to safeguard its chip industry. The Chinese government made substantial investments in chip companies, providing them with financial support to not only weather the storm, but also thrive. Furthermore, the government actively promoted the expansion of these chip companies on a global scale by providing enticing incentives for international growth. Remarkably, this occurred at a juncture marked by a chip shortage, amplifying the importance of chip production. Notably, China's efforts yielded remarkable results as its chip manufacturing capacity experienced substantial growth. All of this transpiring even amidst the enforcement of sanctions by the US. The increase in chip production caused significant worries in the United States, one of the primary concerns centered on China's bold approach to marketing chips. While numerous other nations didn't attach great importance to outdated chip technology, China not only recognized their importance, but also increased its production. This set the stage for an intriguing goal. The worldwide shortage of chips made numerous countries rely on China as their chip source. In the midst of this, the US encountered challenges in fulfilling its chip requirements. This shift in the balance of power positioned China as a prominent chip supplier, casting a shadow over the anticipated effects of the imposed sanctions. Considering the changing landscape, experts Robert Daly and Matthew Turpin emphasize a vital point. They show the need for the US and its allies to watch out for behaviors from Chinese chip companies that go against fair market principles. This watchfulness is important because such behaviors might lead to relying too much on China for chips. This dependence could affect the independence of these nations in important matters. The primary issue centers on the current positioning of the United States, struggling to maintain its competitiveness. The US finds itself increasingly dependent on resources from China, creating a challenging predicament. American companies are encountering difficulties in securing an adequate supply of chips for their own needs. 
highlighting the intricacy of the situation. This challenge encompasses a blend of economic, geopolitical, and technological elements, thereby adding layers of complexity to the U.S.'s ability to effectively navigate and address the situation. Because of this, officials from the U.S. and Europe are thinking about new ways to limit China's chip-making ability. But the question here is, why aren't these officials focusing on helping their own companies grow faster than the Chinese ones? The answer is simple but serious. American companies can't keep up with Chinese companies. China's chip companies get a lot of money from their government so they can make chips more cheaply than others. This financial advantage makes it hard for non-Chinese companies to compete, making the situation even more complicated. This important point shows something big. China can make chips cheaply, and this is a big deal. What makes it even more noticeable is that there's not a lot of strong competition, mainly because the US and Europe aren't giving their chip companies similar support. So there's a disadvantage for Western companies compared to China's strong chip industry. You can see that Chinese chip companies have a big advantage over US and European ones. Because of this, there's a growing demand for products from the Chinese chip industry. This situation is causing worry in the U.S. people are afraid that China might exceed the U.S. in making chips and that relying too much on China is risky. Even though there's talk of the U.S. trying to distance itself from China, the U.S. keeps getting chips from China and expects to need even more in the future. So the question is, what should the U.S. do about this? There's a general notion that both the United States and Europe should actively support and enhance the capabilities of their domestic chip companies to better match China's competitive strength. However, an alternative perspective is gaining attention. The United States is contemplating the option of reinstating sanctions on China's chip industry as part of its strategic response. The main objective of this approach is to highlight the significant issue of China's subsidies, which are causing concern, and to reduce reliance on China, a consideration that has been undergoing contemplation for a considerable duration. Many people think that the United States might opt to impose additional sanctions on China to restrain its rising influence. However, a retrospective glance reveals that prior instances of sanctions have not proven entirely successful in stopping China's progress. The underlying concern stems from worries surrounding the potential consequences of China's further move within the market. A particular note is the heightened unease regarding the gradual decline in the significance of both the US and European ship industries. Given the gravity of these apprehensions, the critical lies in swift and sharp leadership action to navigate and avoid this situation's trajectory before it worsens further. However, China's huge growth seems to be beyond the usual ways of control. While US leaders think about pushing back against China's power instead of just helping their own companies, questions come up about the nature of this competition. Is it a real competition or more like a new kind of Cold War? The way things are going now reminds us of how things were during the Cold War, suggesting that the U.S. might be more focused on conflict than friendly competition. As we conclude our exploration of China's surge into legacy chips, it's clear the landscape is changing. Alright guys, that wraps up our video for today. Please do well to share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more insightful discussions. Your engagement fuels our content. Thank you for being a part of this conversation.